Pastor Varun and Pastor Dala Hopperson would like to welcome you to the following message from New Hope International Church, Seattle, Washington. Here is Pastor Lau's dynamic teaching that will change your life with love, hope, and peace in Jesus Christ. First of all, I want to say that I don't teach this out of theory from Bible school. In fact, when I grew up in Thailand, to see the manifestation of demons on a normal part of life. Since I was young, I saw all kinds of demons. Because in the Asian world or in the third world country, demonic spirits are something that manifests so clearly, not like in America. In America, you may not see demonic manifestation like in Thailand. You may see it in more like a, in the pornography or drug addiction or something else. But in Asia, since I was young, I saw demonic power in my home, in the temple, in many places, everywhere. And I really had experiences to deal with them. I mean, I was part of it at that time because I was not a believer. I was involved in demonic power when I was a young man. And I thank God that God set me free from the power of darkness and come into the kingdom of God and expel demons out of me so many times to clean me up so that I can be a clean vessel of God. So what I will teach you today is not just a theory, but I have seen it and I have experienced what I'm talking about. Today, I'd like to talk about two issues. Number one, I want to talk about demons, that they are persons. They are not just an influence or a title name or medical terminology, but demons are real persons. They are spirits without body. How do we know that demons are real persons? Because the Bible says so. And we're going to look through many scriptures in the Bible. First of all, if you're going to fight a battle, if you're going to go out and fight a battle, you need to know your enemy. Is that right? If you try to fight against demons without knowing that they are person, you will lose the battle. For example, you think that demons are just a disease that you try to use chemical to fix it. You will never overcome or chase that demon out of you because you keep taking medication trying to fight against demon. But once you know that you are fighting with a person, the chance of winning is more than 90%. Otherwise, you will be like a boxer who are blindfolded and try to punch the air. You don't know where to punch. You need to know exactly who you to, to punch and what you're going to deal with. The Bible talks about depression. Depression, many times, is not just a disease. The Bible called depression as spirit. Isaiah 61 verse 3 say, The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So it's not just a disease called depression, but we're talking about spirit. How many of you, sometimes you just drive on the freeway, suddenly you feel like something come upon you, and you feel kind of depressed, feel like just don't want to go to work. You feel very oppressed that day. And that is a spirit of depression or oppression or heaviness. It's demonic power, demonic oppression. So we're going to look in the Bible that demons are persons. Everyone say persons. Number one, demons have a will. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 to 44, the Bible says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then he say, I will return. Everyone say, I will. You can see demons say, I will. They have a will. They have a determination, a strong will, definite decision. I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. I believe that Millions of Christians in the world, especially in the U.S., don't have any clue about demons. Never been taught, never heard about, or maybe heard about it just theory. But in fact, they are so real. And they're working today and even in the church. 
Demons are real, and they have a will. So they have a will to destroy us. They have a will to get us down and become ineffective for the kingdom of God. If they cannot stop you from becoming a Christian, they will stop you from being effective of being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have a strong will. Mark chapter 5, verses 11 to 13 say, Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons, you see many demons with S, begged him saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine There were about 2,000, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. In Mark chapter 5, you can see that these more than 2,000 demons had a will that I want to go into those swine. They had determination. You can see demons are person, not just an influence or not just an idea or abstract thinking. They also had emotion. The Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 19, you believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Trembling is a physical manifestation of intense emotional response. When you see something and you really either fear or feel upset or something, you tremble, you, you were shaking. Is that right? How many people have that experience? Maybe sitting in the airplane and the airplane was shaking by the, the wind and you start to get tremble and say, oh, what's going to happen here? You get trembling. Many times when I face difficult surgery and the patient keep losing blood and I try to stop the blood, but it's very difficult to control the bleeding. I tell you, my legs start to shake because I start to be concerned that I'm going to lose this person on the table and die. So trembling is a physical manifestation of intense fear or concern of something. That's why sometimes when a person with demon comes close to the anointing of God, you can see that person start to tremble, shake. Not that person shake, but the demon inside start shaking because demons are afraid of the name of Jesus. They're afraid of the word of God. They're afraid of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They have emotions and they have feeling like any person in the world. Number three, demons have knowledge. The Bible says in Mark chapter 1, 23 to 24, demons have knowledge. They know your names. They know the name of your dad. They know the name of your mom. If they follow your family, like we call family spirits, family demons, they will follow from generation to generation. They know everything about you. They study you. They know what you like. They know what you don't like. So they know how to attack you because they have knowledge. The Bible says now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You see, I know who you are. The Holy One of God. In fact, the Jews at that time, did not even know that Jesus was a Messiah. They did not have an idea that this is the Son of God. They thought this is just a son of a carpenter, walking around, trying to preach the gospel. But demons knew that Jesus was the Holy One of God, or the Messiah. They had knowledge. Acts chapter 19, 13 to 15, then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists, you see the Jews knew about demons, they knew about casting out demons, took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Siva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. These seven men tried to cast out demons too in the name of Jesus. But in fact, they were not born again. They did not have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? So the devil, the demons know who you are. You cannot lie to demons that you are born again or not. You cannot lie to demons that you are anointed or not. They know everything about you. Amen. 
they know Jesus, they know Paul, and I believe that they know Pastor Caesar as well. When Pastor Caesar walk close to demon, demon have to tremble because he's anointed man. Amen. And they also know the members of New Hope International Church that we are anointed people, and they cannot do anything to us. Amen. Because we love the Word and we love the Holy Spirit, they know everything about us. Especially if we talk too much, they will know more. Sometimes you need to keep your mouth shut. Don't say too much. Amen. They listen to us. Number four, they have self-awareness. Persons have self-awareness. In Mark chapter 5, verse 9, then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered, saying, he meant the man who had multiple demons. My name is Legion, for we are many. They call themselves, we are many. So they are self-aware of themselves that they have so many inside that person. You know, demons came as a gang. When they come, they come as a big group and attack one person. That's why I believe that deliverance or cleaning up a person's life have to go little by little process, little by little. Every Sunday, when we get lay hand on, and I hope I can lay hand more on Sunday, when we get lay hand on, We get cleansed little by little. We, we don't know how many demons come out from us, but we get cleansed again and again, little by little. Today, I share with one of my patients. Uh, this patient came to me and talked about tumor in the brain, but they are Christians, and suddenly we're talking about demons in that room, and talking about pastoral work. I share with my patient today that, you know, as a pastor, I want to lay hand every Sunday. Because I love the members so much that I want them to be cleansed. I want them to be pure and clean and grow up. But at the same time, I need to be sensitive to the non-believers or guests who come in and have no understanding about laying on of hand and the file of God and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So we don't want to turn them away either. So I struggle between blessing the member and trying to get people saved on Sunday morning. So. If you invite friend, could you please explain to your friend ahead of time that what happened in our church so that they will not be shocked? Amen. <laughs> Because we are not a typical traditional church, we believe in the move of God. We believe that God is moving, and actually, if you could go back to 2,000 years ago and walk with Jesus 2,000 years ago, His meeting is not a typical church today. His meeting in His church doesn't have a lot of lights. And uh, performance, and come people come and dance, and have joke on the stage. He preached very strong. He lay hand on the sick, heal people. He cast out demons. His ministry is not typical church today in America. Amen. His ministry really moved in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's why I have a hard time trying to build a church with performance on the stage because I feel that that is not the way Jesus did. Jesus really moved under the anointing of God. We want to follow the footstep of Jesus Christ. Amen. Demons have self-awareness. Not only that, demon conscience was seared to the point that they will not respond to the gospel. The Bible say in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 2, the Spirit clearly say that in later times some will abandon the faith. And follow deceiving spirits, I mean evil spirit, and things taught by demons. I've seen this all the time in the church. People come in, love God, and suddenly that person or those people start to be negative against the church, start to criticize the sermon, start to criticize what pastor is doing. Deceiving spirit come and talk to them, and they listen. And they begin to criticize the anointed people in the body of Christ, and they put in the block and attack the pastor, attack people, and eventually they disappear from the church and they backslide. Eventually, they don't want to even go to church because of the teaching of demons that go against the anointing. You need to understand that every time we come against the anointing, we are walking in the same spirit of antichrist. You know why? Anti means against. Christ means anointing. Christ means the anointed one. So when people go against the Holy Spirit, they are following the work of the Antichrist spirit. So we have to be careful. We should not be against the Holy Spirit, deceiving spirit, and things taught by demon. So demon can teach too, but wrong doctrines. 
Such teachings come through hypocritical liars, mean the demon who lies, whose conscience have been seared as with a hot iron. According to the Greek language, this is not a man who is a liar, but it's a spirit of liar whose conscience have been seared, mean cut, mean destroyed to the point that even you preach the gospel to demon, they will never repent. They will never turn to God. In other words, they are hopeless spirit. They will never come back to Jesus. Amen. So their conscience has been seared. Number six, demons are able to speak. In Mark chapter one verse twenty-four, let us alone. What have we do to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. You can see that demon can speak. Sometimes, when you give counseling to people, and you start to talk about repenting, and that person start to talk back to you. Sometimes it's not the man talk. Demons are talking, and try to talk back to you, and try to argue with you. I've seen this all the time. Sometimes I give counseling. Long time ago, before I began to do deliverance in the church, people argue, and after a while, I noticed that this is not man talking. This is Demonic power, de- demonic conversation. Many years ago, we have a woman come into our church, and a, a son too, a woman and a son. At that time, we did not understand about the fire of God. We did not understand about spiritual thing. I was a new pastor, so one day this lady came to my house. She said that she believed in God, but I noticed one thing: she never, never talked about Jesus. She never mentioned about the name of Jesus. She just said, "I believe in God." So I kind of watch why she never say Jesus. One day she came to my house. Actually, apartment. We live in apartment at that time, because our house was burned. And she came into the apartment and she said, "Pastor Lau, the Spirit of God told me that this coming Sunday I need to go up on the stage and dance." And suddenly she danced in my apartment and show me dance like a. Like Indian God, and did not understand that that is demon. So I say, no, 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 you cannot dance on Sunday. Uh, no, 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 no. So I just told her, that, don't do that. She show up on Sunday. She walk up to the stage, and say, I'm gonna dance right now. Thank God, Neil Johnson, and a few big men in our church come and grab her to another room. And at that time, I did not know how to handle demon in the church. She went to another room and she began to dance over there. Now I look back; it's demonic power, demonic spirit that try to destroy the church, try to come in and distract people from Jesus Christ. And they can talk, they can dance, they can do a lot of things because they are persons. Amen. So we can see here that demons can talk through a person. Therefore, sometimes all the young girl in this room, all the single girl, be careful. A man may come to you, a man with the lust spirit. May come to you and say, "You are so beautiful. Come with me. Let's come and drink. Let's come and have fun." The lust spirit inside want to grab you, so you have to be careful. Or maybe demon of drugs can come to you and say, "Let's come and have fun in the nightclub together." You need to be careful. Don't listen to those spirits. Amen. Let's look at another scripture. Matthew chapter twelve, verses twenty-four to twenty-eight. Now, when the Pharisees Heard it, they said, "This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons." But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, "Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself." How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. We learn something about demons in this passage. At that time, Jesus cast out demons. But the Pharisees who were mad at him accused him that he was casting out demons by the god of flies, F L I E S, flies. 
the Jews call Satan the god of flies. So Satan is the head of all demons. Demons are spirit on earth here. And Satan is the head. Satan also is the head of fallen angel in the heavenlies up there, in the second heaven. So he is the head of both worlds, the heavenly worlds and also the earth here. And demons are on earth to destroy people. So Satan sent all these demons to go and destroy the churches and destroy people around the world. And Satan has the, another name called Beelzebub, which means the god of flies. In other words, God, through the Bible, tried to tell us the analogy of demon compared to the insect world. When you t- think about insect, like flies, like mosquitoes, what do you think? Number one, I think about millions of them. There are millions of flies and insects around the world. Every single place, all around the world, there are insects everywhere. Even your house right now, you go back to your backyard, you see insects. So demons, there are millions of demons out there. That's why we have to protect ourselves, close the door, don't let them come in. Because they're going to come to your, try to get into your house, try to get into your life. Amen. You have to be careful when you turn on internet. Don't go into look bad picture. Don't read bad books. You don't want to open the door for these millions of demons that are going to come and try to destroy your life, your finances, your work, your marriage, your health, everything. They will try to come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Not only about millions or uncountable numbers of demons, but insects come and harass you and defy you. In Seattle, you may not feel that much, but if you go to Thailand or go to Florida, in the summertime, you sit outside. The fly is going to come in and try to bug you. And you feel like harassed. Like, mm, don't harass me. I, I want to sit here and enjoy uh, the, the sunshine. So they come and harass and they come to, to really defy you. They come and maybe put dirty things on your skin. So you can see that insects or demons come and try to harass and destroy human beings. You remember the book of Job, the Bible called demons locusts, swarming locusts, eating locusts. Compare demons to locusts, come and destroy the field and the life of people. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit or the fire of God come and destroy those locusts. That's why I believe in the fire of God in the church. The church cannot be healthy, cannot be fully equipped cannot become like Christ, become the, the bride of Christ, pure and holy without the fire of God. Because the fire of God will come and destroy locusts in the church. Amen? And that is for the church. And not only that, when you think about insects, you always think about the kind of undercover, like something you don't see. i give you an example. If a mosquito species, Anopheles, come and bite you, the female's mosquito come and bite you. You go to Africa or Southeast Asia, and they put into you the parasite called malaria. In 7 to 30 days, you're going to start to have a symptom of fever, chill, headache, and to the point that you can die of liver failure, kidney failure, cerebral failure, your brain just swell and die. People can die of malaria because of the parasite that come into the body through an insect. The insect come, the mosquito come, bite, disappear. You don't see them, it's undercover. You may be sleeping and then come bite and disappear. But 7 to 30 days later, you began having symptoms. So in other words, demons attack you and you have symptoms, but you don't know that they are behind the scene. That's why we need to depend on the Holy Spirit to detect that the problem that you face is demonic or just physical. Demon, you cannot see because they're spirit. So they attack you undercover. You have symptoms. Maybe you may be short temper, or maybe you are very addicted to certain kind of movie or you are very full of jealousy. The demon of jealousy inside you 
cause you to be jealous of people all the time. But you don't know that something behind on the inside is causing that problem in the inside of you. Amen. So that's why we cannot just come to church and deal with nice program and the physical thing, a natural thing, nice music, nice uh, cookie and nice latte bar outside and nice soft seat, nice carpet and happy, happy. No, we are dealing with a spiritual thing here. We are fighting with spiritual world. Our enemies are spiritual. That's why the church needs to run in a spiritual way, not just natural way, not just a nice program and nice lunch and fellowship, but we need to move in the Spirit of God to really set the captive free. Our church doesn't have a session to deliver people one-on-one. Why? Because we lay hands every Sunday already. We already move in the Holy Spirit, so we cleanse people all the time. We try to get people come in and cleanse all the time. We don't need to spend time one-on-one giving counseling for 10 years. We'd rather spend time, go out to evangelize and get the lost saved. And when come to churches, clean them up with the fire of God. Every Sunday, just clean them up. Amen? Now, we're going to learn how to be delivered. The second part of this teaching, how to be delivered. You learn already that demons are persons. Number two, you learn that they are like insects. They come and attack you without knowing. You don't see them, but you have the symptoms and signs like a, uh, a sick person. John chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believed in Him should not perish but have eternal life. When we talk about perish, we talk about eternal life, we're thinking about after death, we go to heaven. But actually, eternal life starts now. Amen? Zozo of salvation is not just about going to heaven. It includes everything. Salvation includes, or Zozo includes, healing, deliverance, being set free from demons, protection, prosperity, success, abundant life. Everything includes in the finished work of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? God doesn't want us to perish. God, through Jesus, wants us to be set free and live an abundant life on earth here. Joel chapter 2, verse 32, it's a prophecy. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word saved here, the same thing, shall be delivered, shall be set free. For in Mount Zion, Mount Zion represents the church. In Jerusalem means all the believers, there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. So God said, I will bring deliverance to my church. The church needs to move in the Holy Spirit and see people get set free from demonic power. Therefore, we're going to learn the steps of getting set free. We need to get ourselves ready to be set free before I perform operation. I tell my patient, okay, number one, you go get x-ray. I need to evaluate x-ray to know exactly where I'm going to cut. Two, you need to sleep well that night. Don't go to bed late. Three, you need to be without food for at least eight hours, getting ready. Amen? So they don't eat anything after midnight. You don't take any drug that morning. You come to up to the hospital. Some of them even shave their own head ahead of time before brain surgery. They don't want me to shave them. They want to shave themselves. They go through process getting ready for surgery. Deliverance is like surgery. Come and cut and remove something. So you need to prepare yourself to get delivered. If you don't prepare yourself, you cannot get delivered. The same thing like surgery. We're going to look at six things that you need to prepare yourself in order to be a candidate for the surgical deliverance of God from heaven by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Deliverance must come in the name of Jesus only, not under any man's name. I cannot deliver demon from you, myself, only in Jesus' name. Two, it will be done not by methods, but by the Spirit of God. Amen? Only the Spirit of God can deliver people. That's why when Jesus said a while ago, but if I cast out demon, even Jesus himself, when he cast out demon, he cast by the Spirit of God. He was so anointed. 
He did not come up with the title. You know, I'm a son of God. You know that. Get out of here. No, he c o m e by the Spirit. He used the anointing to cast out demons. How many people want to know the six preparation for deliverance? Number one, humble yourself. When you humble yourself, it does not mean that you have to be a saint like Paul. You can be normal Christian like this in this generation. You don't need to be a preacher. You don't need to go to Bible school. You just have to humble yourself before the Lord and say, "God, you can do whatever you want in my life." God say, "I oppose the proud and give grace to the humble." Grace means supernatural ability from the Holy Spirit to be able to accomplish something in your life. So God say, "I will give grace to the humble." What does it mean? You have two choices. This is a problem in the wealthy society. In the wealthy society, like us here in the Western country, we care so much about dignity, dress nice, hairstyle. Everyone come in with a hat in the church. Sometimes I see Christian compete with each other who gonna wear what on Sunday. Everyone want to look nice. Don't make my makeup dirty. Don't make my hairstyle dirty. I want to keep my hairstyle good. I want my clothes to be well ironed, look good, dignity. And God say, either you choose dignity or you choose to be humble. If you are willing to lose your dignity, your hairstyle may be gone that day. When God touch you, your makeup may be gone. All the mascara can run down to your cheek. You get out. From deliverance, when people undergo surgery, they cannot have dignity anymore. No makeup. The, the doctor gonna wipe out the makeup before they cut on your face to do the plastic surgery. Is that right? No makeup. Nothing. Some of them, sorry to say this, but some of them you have to put the catheter in the bladder, and you know they naked on the operating table to get ready for surgery. I'm, I'm serious. No dignity on the operating room. But they are willing to lose the dignity to be well after surgery. The same thing. If you hold on to your dignity, oh, I'm a pastor. Don't touch me. Don't lay hand on me. I have a big church. I have a big ministry. I know everything. I finished from the Bible school. I know all the Bible. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't do anything to me. I'm fine. You will never get delivered. But if you humble yourself and say, I'm just a child of God. I don't care about my title anymore. I don't care about my clothes, how I look, my hairstyle. You can touch me, God. You can be delivered. Humility, definitely. If you humble yourself now, let God deliver you from demonic power, set you free. You get dignity later on. You're gonna look more anointed, more glorious, because the evil spirit will go out of you, and now you fill with the Holy Spirit, and you look dignified out there. Everywhere you go, so the first thing you need to make a decision: I care about my deliverance more than how I look, how people look at me. I don't care about my title. I don't care about how people look at me. I am willing to lose my dignity to be set free. Amen. People need to humble themselves, and sometimes need to humble themselves to admit that they are having problem. You know, they need to admit their problems because that that hum that is humility. So number two, we go to the second one. We need to be honest to ourselves, completely honest. If you just keep having the rational and deny yourself all the time, I'm fine. I don't have any problem. Oh no 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 no, I'm good Christian. You keep denying your own problem, then you will never be set free. The Bible says in John chapter eight verse thirty-two, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." Right now, you are learning the truth about demonic power. You're learning the truth about being set free. I'm teaching the truth from the Bible, but the second thing about the truth is that you need to admit and know the truth about yourself. Amen. Maybe you are too sensitive. Some of you may have the spirit of manipulation. Everywhere you go, you manipulate people around you to get your way. Maybe you addicted to pornography. But you don't want to tell anybody. But every time you go home, you turn on the internet and watch pornography. But the pastor doesn't know. Anyone doesn't know. 
No one knows about it if you don't admit that that I have a big problem. I'm addicted to pornography. I need to be set free. I admit the truth of my life that I am in trouble. You will never become set free. So you need to admit the problem. You need to be honest about yourself and don't lie to yourself or lie to God. In fact, God knows before you even know about yourself. Amen. So number three, beside be humble, be honest about yourself. Number three, confess your sins. Confessing your sin is like walking in the light. The Bible say that the light comes into the world that is Jesus, but the world loves darkness. In order to come into the light, you need to let the light expose you. The light shine and see the darkness and get rid of the wrong thing. When you come to God, the light, the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to get out of darkness. You need to come and say, "Lord, I confess I have a problem." You need to come with confession. Say, "God, I really sorry that I did wrong." Amen. When you confess your sin, you will not shock God. You will not make God surprised. God knows everything about you, so don't worry that oh. You know, sometimes you want, don't want to tell your spouse something about your life because I'm afraid that my spouse is going to be shocked. You know, you don't shock God. He knows. You tell him, he's not like, really? No. He's going to say, okay, good. You confess. Now you come into the light and the light is going to set you free. Jesus is going to set you free. Amen. So confess. When you come to the prayer line, you confess every sin that you can know of. Anything. Amen. Maybe even little sin, lie, hatred, jealousy, like to steal thing, or maybe doubt. Some of you may have doubt. Maybe negative thinking, being pessimistic all the time. All these things you need to confess to God and say, "God, help me." Number four, beside humble yourself, be completely honest and confess your sins. Number four, repent and renounce all evil. You need to agree with God before God can help you. Do you know that sins are the enemies of God, and demons are the enemy of God? If you still love sins, you love His enemy, and God is not going to come in and say, "I'm going to kick enemy out of you." God will do the things for you only you agree with Him that sins are bad, and demons are not good for you. You need to hate His enemies like the way He hates them. God hates sins and demons, but He loves people, loves sinners. You need to understand that. So whenever you repent and you say, "God, I agree with you, that this habit is wrong, this practice is wrong." For example, some of you may like fortune telling, some of you may like horoscope, or those occult practices are wrong, and they are an enemy of God. Maybe sexual immorality. Some people are so impacted by lust, sexual lust, and they cannot control themselves. You need to come to God and say, "I'm sorry, God. I repent and I agree with you that that is yucky. That is, ee, I hate it. I don't want to be. I don't want to do that anymore. I hate sin that you hate. You agree with God and agree that those are the enemies of God. Then God can deliver you. Amen." So that's number four. Number five, forgive others. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, if you read from verse 21 to 35, talking about a servant who have debt, and he went to his boss, his master. His master said, "I forgive you. I will not get money from you. I I cancel your debt." But when his friend came to him with a smaller amount of debt, that Servant say, "No, no, you have to give back to me. Otherwise, I'm gonna whip you. I'm gonna put you in jail." When the master heard that, the master say, "Send this man to the torturer." You know who is torturer? Demonic power. So, in other words, it's the spiritual universal principle that if a person does not want to forgive, you automatically open up demonic power into your life. You exposed to torturers, maybe sickness, 
I remember a story of a woman who get liver cancer, and she got mad at God and she got mad at her husband. Her husband left her. Her husband dumped her to go with another girl. She got mad at God and got mad at her husband. She was attacked by liver cancer. One day she went to a church, and she repented, and she said, "Sorry, God, I was mad at you, and I was mad at my husband. I forgive you and forgive my husband." You know what happened? She got healed completely from liver cancer. The demon left her because she forgave. Before you get into deliverance, you need to forgive everybody around you who offend you. Maybe your wife, your husband, maybe your parents, maybe your friend in the church, maybe your boss. Anybody that has offended you, you need to forgive them in order to get deliverance. Amen. So that's number five. Number six, the last one. Simple. Call on the name of the Lord. John chapter six verse thirty-seven. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. So, in other words, Jesus said that if you come to me and call on me, I will not let you down. If you call on the name of the Lord, help me, deliver me, Jesus said, I will not let you down. I will help you. Matthew twelve twenty-eight. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely. The kingdom of God has come upon you. So we fulfill these six principles: repentance, confessing, humble, and be honest about ourselves. Forgive people. Call on the name of the Lord, and then the person who will deliver us is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, it's interesting. That when Jesus told the disciple to go out and preach the gospel, he said, "Go and preach the gospel all over the world." And you know, the first thing he said that in my name, cast out demons. How many times you see casting out demons in the church today? Rare. People preach the gospel but never cast out demons because they are ignorant. As a doctor, physical doctor, natural doctor. And as a pastor, I can see the correlation. That if you wake up every single day and you never take a shower, you never wash your hand. Before I came here, I wash my hands because I know I'm gonna lay hand on people. I need to wash my hand so that I honor you. I don't come with the dirty hand today. I come with a clean hand. I wash my hand. I don't want any virus on my hand. I don't want any bacteria. Is that right? Before I go into the operating room, I wash my hand for two minutes with. Better die solution. I clean myself up. The same thing in the church. It should be really normal practice for every single believers who come into the church have to go through deliverance. You, how you're g o i n g to do it? It's up to you. Each church it may be different, but this church, the way we do is to get people into the fire, because the Bible says the fire of God come. And purge and burn all the junk out of us. That include tradition, religion, sin, bondage, and demonic power. The file of God is the Holy Spirit. So every Christian should be in the file of God to get cleansed on a regular basis, because you don't know what jump into you tomorrow. When you get out of here, maybe you get mad at somebody. Maybe you turn internet in the wrong way. Something jump on you. You need to keep cleansing. How many people take a shower once a month? Raise your hand up. I'm glad there's no one raise your hand. How many people take a shower every single day? How many people twice a day? They try to take a shower every single day, at least twice a day. The same thing in the body of Christ. We should get into the fire of God on a regular basis. Let the fire burn all the junk out of us. That's why I believe with all my heart that the fire of God is a normal practice in the church. But I know that a lot of Christians who don't understand this issue come to the church that believe in the fire. They think that this is crazy. This is weird. Ah, oh, this is weird. No, it's not weird. It's normal. I just got an email from a lady from another country. She loves us. She 
follow our podcast. She listened to the sermon in the, about the fire of God on the podcast. She said she wanted to come over camp badly to get touched by the fire, but she could not fly here because it's so far away. Thank God that Pastor Rodney fly to Europe, so she went to that meeting, and she went in to introduce herself to Pastor Rodney, that I am a friend of Pastor Lau in Seattle. Pastor Rodney just like this fire. She <laughs> she was on the ground, got drunk in the Holy Spirit. The fire of God touched her and burned her for an hour on the floor. She just get drunk in the Holy Spirit. She just emailed me yesterday. She said that she has a chronic disease that have pain in her legs and pain in her body. She says since then, the pain disappearing every single day. Yeah. Praise God. Demons attack her, but the fire of God set her free. Yeah. Amen. How many people want to live on earth here completely clean and pure and holy and no demons, even one demon in your life? Raise your hand up. Amen. Demon doesn't have to come in the form of criminal. When I watch movie about criminals and uh, people go and kill one another in Africa, and I look at those and I and Pastor Da look at each other and say, this is demonic. Yeah. How come people can kill each other like that? This is demonic. Amen. We don't want those demons inside us. The murder demon. But demon can be little, little one. Maybe like very sensitive. Somebody don't say hi to you. You say, mm, they don't love me anymore. The demon that I hate the most in the church is demon of religion. Some Christian come in nice and look like love Jesus. After a while, demon of religion come in and they begin to get prideful. And walk around like I know everything, and everything has to be tr- traditional, have to do this way, this way, this way. Anything that the Holy Spirit is doing, I don't want that. That is demon of religion, and that is dangerous too. They can come in a different form, so we have to be careful. Let me conclude this teaching about deliverance. If you smoke tobacco, cigarette, or uh, Cigarette, smoke into your lung. I never smoke, so I don't know how to do it. And you feel like, oh, this is not good for my lung. What do you do with that smoke? You cough it out, you exhale. Is that right? You exhale. Actually, the word evil spirit in the Greek language is the same word as wind or breath. When Jesus filled Peter, with the Holy Spirit in the book of John at the end of the book. The Bible says, Jesus breathed on him and say, receive the Holy Spirit. So, in other words, the Holy Spirit come as a wind, come as a water, come as a rain. It compared to rain to wind. So, when you want to receive the Holy Spirit, what do you do? In the Spirit. If you have a jar of water, you drink. The Bible says in John chapter 7, the Spirit of God is compared to living water, like a river on the inside of you, like water. You need to drink. So when the fire of God comes to you, you don't come and say, what's going on here? You keep thinking like this, you get nowhere. You need to come like, you need to draw, you need to, Drink the Spirit of God. But at the same time, if you want to get rid of demon, you need to exhale spirit out. You need to breathe them out. When an ambulance comes on the road, you can hear the sirens sound. What happened? All the cars have to park on the side. And then the ambulance go to the hospital or to the place where they want to pick up the patients. The same thing. When demons want to come out of you, you don't block them. You let, you let them come out. Don't speak in tongue. Don't pray. Don't speak anything. Just let them come out. And when the demon come out, you may have different manifestation. Can be different ways. 
It, you may not feel anything at all. I've seen people who get touched by God, lie on the floor, and come up and say, "You know, Pastor, in my spirit, I saw a lot of cockroaches ran out of me." They don't feel anything; they just lie there, and this evil spirit just come out because the fire of God burned them. Or people can cough. I've seen people cough. Cough, 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 because evil spirit come out of them. When you, be, you begin to feel like something going to come out, you go ahead and cough them out or exhale them out. Some people may shake because it's coming out from you, may groan some voice, or may even cry and yell out loud. I've seen people, actually i one of them. When the demon come out of me in 1987, I was screaming, and I was so embarrassed. I never forgot that day. We went to the pastoral meeting. I was sitting maybe about fifth row in the back. Everyone was was pastor, and pastor that was there. And then pastor say, "Stand up." I stand up, and he say, "Fire!" Like this, I feel the wind of God touch me. And after that, I was on the floor under the chair, and I was crying and screaming and crying and screaming. My face looked like a mess. All the saliva come out. All the mucus come out from me for almost 45 minutes, nonstop. And I know this is not a normal cry. This is deliverance. Demon come out of me that day a lot. Maybe hundreds of them come out of me. From when I was young, I worship idol. I give my life to many, many gods. So demon come out of me, but I I was set free that day. And I was so glad that God did that to me. I was not embarrassed. I thank God for deliverance. I don't care my hair. When I got up and I walked to the restroom that day, I walked like this, and my hair, like, you know, looked like this neurosurgeon from Seattle looked like a mess. He looked like drunk man because the fire of God touched me. I saw one time in Budapest, Hungary, I saw a, a pastor was sitting in the front of the row, and the Holy Spirit touched him. So he got up from the chair and he began to walk like this and cough. And at that time, demon come out of him and he fell down on the ground under the power of God. So it can be different manifestation, can be yelling, can be crying, can be uh, so many things can happen to you. I'm not telling you that you need to yell tonight, okay? I'm not telling you to groan tonight. I'm not telling you to cry tonight. But whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do to you, you need to yield. You don't resist. Let it happen. If you feel something come out, just go for it. Some people vomit even. I see people vomit out again and again. I I see this a lot in Thailand. When I lay hands on thousands of people, a lot of people just lie on the floor and start to vomit. And and these people never listen to my sermon. This happened without knowing what I preach because I didn't preach about demons all the time when I go to Thailand. I remember one time I was laying hands on a young woman about 22 years old and she began to fight with me, and I say, in the name of Jesus, you go right now, and start to cough and vomit. And when she got up, she told me that she almost committed suicide before she came. Demon told her to jump out of the building. And she began to look at herself yucky, look very unworthy. After that day, she was a new woman. I heard that she got married this year. She got a boyfriend and got married in the church. She's a new woman set free from demonic power. She was humble enough to look nasty that night, but she got set free, and she became a new woman. Amen? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 8, verse 7, For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were polarized and lame were healed. Demon can cry out in the meeting. I believe that if Jesus became a pastor in America, his church may not be a big church because people scare. Go to his church and, what? People cry? People shake? Oh, demon come out? No, no, no. I want to go nice, cozy church, nice program, nice singing, people dress nice, good worship. No, 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 this kind of thing. But that is not biblical. In the Bible, Jesus cast out demons. People cried, people shake, but it's good because that is real. This is a real, real Christianity. Amen? Not just performance. 
I'm not a performer. I am a minister. So I want to minister to so set the captive free. Every time I see demon come out from people, I'm so happy because I know they're set free. I'm so happy. They're gonna have a new life. Amen. You learned something tonight. Amen. How many people know that God set you free in the past from demonic power when the fire of God touched you? Raise your hand up. Can somebody come up and share a little bit? Don't be ashamed that God ministered to you in the past and you're set free from demonic power. Anyone want to share to encourage people? Pastor Da, you want to share something? <clears throat> Thank you very much. I <clears throat> had experience um, when God touched me and then, and then I had uh, two times, I had dreams. The first one I had, the dream was that um, some, something came out of, of my nose. You know, like, um, and I know in my spirit when I woke up that the evil spirit left me. And another time was I was like kind of yawn and the very, very big like wind, I guess, came out um, through my mouth. And when I woke up, I also know that this is another time of, of demon went out of, of me. Um, because, you know, like um, in our life, we, since young, we did not know what's going on in our life, like uh, especially when I was growing up in Thailand, um, like um, we worship idol, and our parents might give us to, to some temple, you know, and we did not know what's going on in our life. Or our family might commit some sin, uh, certain sins that it also affect us. So, so, so many things, you know, but the purpose of God is He wants to deliver us and He wants to set us free. So, and I am one of them. That I am so thankful that my pastor and also my husband, <laughs> he, <clears throat> he embraced the anointing and the five God and when he learn about it, he embraced it, and he exercised it, and, and took, it, took it. And I, I reaped the benefit of that too. So, um, before um, Pastor Lau and I, we, we love each other, but we never could be one. And a lot of time, I look at him, and I, I wish that we were one. Like, why can't we be one? We, we always have some conflict. And we always have some misunderstanding um, to each other. <clears throat> so we never had a really happy life because we always um, a fight. But after the five God, after um, we embraced the Holy Spirit into our church, and, and like I said, I always reap the benefit too, that um, I did not know when it happened. It took a while. To, to happen in my life. But I have to tell you that at this point of life, we love each other so much and we are so much one. Mm. We are so much one in our thinking, in our heart, in our purpose of life. We are so happy because when we are happy, like our mom and dad are happy, our children are also happy. Amen. Our children, they are also like um, feel secure and they are happy and they, they express that happiness. Mm. And also when the pastors are united, it benefits the church mm. too because the member feels secure. The member feel uh, that they see an example. You mm. know, I mean like we are not <clears throat> ultimate example. The Lord Jesus Christ is. But a lot of time people see human being first before mm. they see God. So when they come into the church, they see that the pastors um, are united and love one another. Um, they feel more more secure, I guess, and they see example. And um, but I really encourage, and you know, God fix my marriage life. Mm. Otherwise, I think that we probably cannot live together. Mm. And uh, other things too that the Lord really helped me personally, like anger, um, and uh, jealousy, and. Uh, 
you know many things that was happening in my life and and in fact I I really have to tell you that uh, I shared with uh, one sister the other day that I could not remember my own self. I think I hmm. share with sister Noi <laughs> that I could not remember my my life before. You know, it was so sad, depressed, lack of happiness, no joy. So many things that was happening in my life which I could not figure it out why. But I really thank the Lord for His Holy Spirit and um, that come into the church and, you know, Basically, God loves us so much. He wants to set us free. God loves us so much. He, he wants to see all of us have a joyful heart. You know, so, mm. so <clears throat> I don't know about anybody, but I know <clears throat> that I will not resist. And I come here today. You know, I said, God, I open my heart, my mind. I open my, myself. Whatever you want to do, what, you know, how you, however you want to touch me, please do it. Because I know, because of the love of God, he will not harm us, but he will surely, you know, come into our life and deliver us from from the unseen enemy that might harass us, like the mosquito that Pastor Lau gave example. So I really want to um, encourage all of you that well, I am one of I am one of the person that God re- deliver deliverance. Amen. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. So, in conclusion, I want to encourage you. We talk about demon tonight, but actually the Holy Spirit knows what you need. He knows exactly what He's going to do to you. Some of you may need deliverance tonight. Some of you may need something else. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, not the ministry of Pass Allow. We allow the Holy Spirit to touch you. A lot of Christians think this way, I'm fine. I'm saved. I know Christ, I know the Bible, I've studied the Bible for many years, I'm okay. What else I need? If you think that way, you are not poor in the spirit. You think you have arrived. So the key of being a Christian who's going to move on to the next level is this. I don't know a lot. I'm still far away from being like Christ. I, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm desperate to grow. So more things to know, so more things to change. I don't have enough faith. I don't have enough love. I cannot even love my enemies yet. I need to change. I'm poor in my spirit. I'm hungry for the things of God. I'm hungry for the things of heaven. God, come and touch me. God, come and change me today. That is revival. Revival is not about shaking, falling, and laughter. But it's about the heart that is so desperate to change and want God to do something in your life. It's about hunger and desperation and yielding and want to change. So tonight, I I just want you to come to be prayed for in the right way, in the right attitude. It's not about just get lay hand on and done and go back and still do the same thing. No, no, I want you to change. I want you to move from glory to glory Stop the old way of life and, and repent of your sin and change. And if God wants to deliver you from demon tonight, let him do it. Don't resist him. Whatever he wants to do, maybe tonight is for somebody, not everybody. I cannot force God. The Spirit of God move like a wind. He knows what he's doing. I cannot put tradition into the church and do everything the same time. Every time I'm going to do the same thing. I cannot let the Holy Spirit move and do whatever he wants. Amen? So, that's what I want to prepare your heart to receive the Holy Spirit and to be prayed for tonight. Amen. Definitely, if you are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit, if you are so well trained in hook up to the Holy Spirit, you don't need to be prayed for. You don't need to have a hand lay on you. And you just sit there on the chair. You start to drink in your chair. You can get drunk in your chair. And God touch, God touch you, deliver you without being laid hand on. But not every Christian is trained to do that. All of us are still very carnal, very physical oriented, very soulish. We cannot hook up to the spirit right away. We need to practice, we need to learn, we need to kind of learn how to hook up to the Holy Spirit. 
and God used the laying on of hand to be the ignite point, the touch, the the touch of faith. When we pray, lay hand on, you kind of have a the moment of faith that I receive right now, and you just yield to the Holy Spirit. So laying on of hand is. <laughs> The laying on of hand is the way that God used to impart the spirit into people, but you need to yield and surrender to God. Amen. Don't set any condition to God and say, "God, uh, I'm gonna do only what I want." God can do whatever He wants. You need to get rid of the old tradition. Amen. Hallelujah. Close your eyes and start to talk to God and start to drink. Holy Spirit, open to the Holy Spirit. Again, Jesus said, "I cast out demon by the Spirit of God." <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't be an observer; be a drinker. Drinker. Drink. Drink. Hallelujah. Tonight, Father, may the wind of God blow in this house. <laughs> may the fire of God fill this place. The rivers of fire run from the throne of God into this place. The place of obscurity, the place that people come like the upper room to seek you. You are not seeking for reputation, Father. You're seeking for the hungry heart. Fill people, Father. Fill the hungry heart tonight. Fire, 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 fire. You get pray for tonight. And you're on the floor. Don't hurry to get up. Just drink as much as you can, like the five wise virgins. Get the oil as much as you can, because you don't know when the groom gonna come. Get the oil as much as you can. Fill with the Holy Spirit. Fire, the fire of holiness, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God, fill the hungry heart. We trust this message has ministered to you. If you would like more information about New Hope International Church or other teaching series, please contact us at 206-275-1042 or visit our website online at www.newhopeinternationalchurch.org. You may also write to us at the following address: New Hope International Church, 9170 Southeast 64th Street. Mercer Island, Washington, 98040. Thank you very much.